Box of Fans. We're here with uh, Al Bernstein. Al, I was just going to get your take um, on some topics going on in the sports, some recent fights. Uh, did you see Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s seventh round TKO over Andy Lee? And what were your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I thought it was a very good fight. Mm -hmm. um, really a fun fight to watch. I thought both fighters fought well. Mm -hmm. Andy Lee fought as well as he could fight in that fight. And uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. has become, to me, a fascinating uh, fighter in many regards. Mm -hmm. He's grown physically so much. He's big. Right. You know, he's big for a middleweight. How how long he can fight at middleweight, you know, is questionable. Mm. Uh, he's strong. He is. He has very poor defense, terrific offense, and apparently a very good chin. Yeah. That is the, I think exactly what makes a very fan-friendly fighter and a fighter that can be in some very exciting matches, and he's already been in exciting matches. The question will be, as he, can, as he moves ahead, and it looks like he's going to fight Sergio Martinez next, is that a winning prescription against A-level fighters? Andy, uh, Andy Lee's about a B-level fighter. Mm -hmm. um, and Lee was able to hit him with some, some very impressive shots, mm -hmm. but he broke him down in this fight. Um, and the question is, will he be able to do that against Martinez? And Sergio Martinez, um, he, he he had this run in boxing where he was doing these virtual show showcase performances. His last two fights against Darren Barker, Matthew Macklin, a little bit tougher. He had to really grind out late round stoppages. Um, just what's your thoughts on Martinez and maybe his kind of little bit struggles with his last two fights? Well, we're gonna know we're gonna know by round five, I think, in in the Chavez. Uh, Junior Martinez fight mm. because Martinez is is going to land punches over the first five or six rounds against Chavez. Yeah. Um, we all have this mental picture in our head of Paul Williams being knocked out in one punch by yeah. Martinez. He's not really a one punch knockout person. True. But that happened in that fight. Mm -hmm. um, and those stoppages you mentioned recently, where he had to kind of grind it out and get them out later mm. in the fight, those fighters didn't have the firepower that Chavez does. Yeah. And the question, that what's going to be interesting is, if Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. can survive those punches he's going to get hit with in the first three or four rounds by Martinez, mm. and keep digging to the body like he does, keep the pressure on every second, you have to think that if he can get that round, fight in the round seven or eight or nine, it's going to be a pretty interesting fight. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, another fight taking place, um, it looks a, uh, a division north of that is the Andre Ward, mm -hmm. uh, Chad Dawson fight for super middleweight supremacy. Uh, just what are your initial thoughts on that fight? Well, I think it's a very interesting fight. I applaud both men for making it. And a big, big uh, plus for Andre Ward is that he got, didn't even have to work at it actually, Chad Dawson decided to come down and fight him at 168. And I'm yeah. sure Chad Dawson did that for a couple reasons. One, his 175 pound title is not on the line. Mm -hmm. And he feels like he can make 168. He's yeah. done it before. Um, but I think that's very helpful to Andre Ward. Um, yeah. And I think it's going to be, a, I think some people think it's just going to be a tactical fight that's not interesting. I, I don't think so. I think it'll, I think they'll engage. And um, and I have a hard time, you know, I, I went through the whole Super 6 tournament doing mm. Andre Ward's fights. And I think Andre Ward is uh, uh, the real deal. Yeah. And, and I think... If I had to take these two fighters, Chad Dawson and Andre Ward, and I had to say, who is going to find a way to win, no matter what, when the chips are down? It's hard for me not to pick Andre Ward. Got you. And just being, you know, the Super Six, seeing Ward from going from an underdog in his first fight in the Super Six against Mikel Kessler to now, how have you seen him kind of grow and flourish as a fighter? Yeah, it's interesting. We watched him, you know, blossom. Because remember, before that, his biggest win to date had been against Edison Miranda, mm -hmm. and there was many people. There were many people that he took a slow uh, course to his first championship. He's yeah. Olympic champion in 2004. And it took him almost four years really to mm. uh, to get to a championship. And in the old days, that would have been a normal state of affairs. But now mm. we expect Olympic champions and people that become a contender fight for a title in a couple of years. Um, but it wasn't because he wasn't ready. It was just because they were getting him ready. And uh, when he after the he started on the Super Six, 
Andre Ward stepped up his game and look at, you know, his victory over Frotch looks even better now uh, right. that Frotch dismantled Lucien Boutet. Got you. And on July 7th, Nonito Donaire, uh, WBO junior featherweight mm -hmm. champion, will be returning to the ring fighting Jeffrey Mathabula, IBF champion. Um, just what are your thoughts on Nonito Donaire and his uh, place in boxing? Well, I, I think Nonito Donaire is the best lower weight fighter in the world. Okay. Um, the only question will be when he, as he's getting up in weight here, if he gets to the point where he's at 126 facing somebody like Europe, just Gamboa or somebody mm. of that nature. Uh, even at one, 122, uh, it now looks like Guillermo Rigondeaux is a pretty interesting challenge. For right. Him. Um, and I hope that fight is made. Mm -hmm. uh, but Nonito Donaire, the only person that beats Nonito Donaire at these lower weight classes is Nonito Donaire. Okay. Whether there's a training glitch or some mental issue, concentration or an injury or something. Uh, he is, when he fights at his best, he is simply, he has physical gifts and skill levels that I think are just too much for most of the fighters at that, at those weight classes. Gotcha. Um. On February 4th, he won the title he now holds by beating uh, former champion Wilfredo Vasquez mm -hmm. Jr. Um, a split decision, but it was pretty clear Nonito yeah. won. Um, what was your thoughts on uh, that fight? I thought it was a good performance. I, Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. is a really good fighter. Yeah. Uh, you know, he lost that fight to Arce, but he's a very good fighter, and he, he showed that. Um, so some people were down on Donaire because of that performance, but uh, I think that was just him facing. He stepped up. He hadn't been at that weight before, mm -hmm. Donaire. Um, and so for his first fight at that weight, that was pretty impressive, I thought. And I spoke to uh, Bob Arum earlier this month, and he said that all signs are going to likely point to a Donaire fight with Jorge Arce. Given Arce's history and his, you know, his fan endearment to the fans, would that be an acceptable fight for people, or do you feel that they are itching to see a, a Rigondeau or a fight yeah, like that? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing about Arce is that he did reinvent himself, and yeah. win, with winning the Vasquez fight, which was one of the great fights of uh, that year, mm -hmm. reinvented him. Now he's defended, I guess, once or twice. But I just don't know if that, to me, that fight is just a placeholder. And and mm -hmm. Nito Donaire is 28 years old. Yeah. And he already had a, a time on the shelf when he had his contract disputes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's been years since he beat Victor Tinian. And then, of course, the other big fight was against Montiel. I think Nito Donaire needs big fights. Yeah. And I, in my opinion, the RSA fight while it may be somewhat marketable, um, that's another placeholder fight okay. to get you to another bigger fight. Got you. And on July 14th, a week later, Amir Khan uh, meets up with um, young WBC junior welterweight champion Danny Garcia. Um, there's been some definite little war of words taking place between the two camps. Uh, what are your thoughts on that fight? Well, it's interesting. Of course, it was supposed to be Khan and uh, Peterson. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a big chance for Danny Garcia. Um, and Amir Khan's a very good fighter. Uh, Garcia wasn't as impressive as he wanted to be in winning the title, although I think he's a very good fighter. The question is, is Danny Garcia a B-level fighter or an A-level fighter? Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out in this fight. And Peterson, with the fallout, um, you know, he was tested with synthetic testosterone in the form of testosterone pellets that were prescribed to him by his physician. I mean, just how shocking was it for you to hear, just hear about how the way that fight fell apart. Well, it's distressing. We've had several instances. The Berto fight that we were supposed to ask why we'll be doing this weekend, the Victor Ortiz Jose Cito Lopez fight, um, as opposed to uh, Ortiz versus Berto uh, on Showtime. And, um, you know, we've had several fights canceled for that reason. And it is distressing. It's starting to raise some issues as to how many fighters are you using performance enhancing drugs. And does it like, you know, boxing is a sport you love. You're so involved in it, but yet on another hand, to know that stuff like this is going place behind the scene, how distressing is it to you? Well, you know, it's across the board in most sports, and that sports uh, have had to deal with it, mm. um, and all, a, a lot of pro sports have have been pretty uh, aggressive in their treatment. I am now of a mind, and I, it's not a story that I've spent a lot of time on to my detriment. I probably should have spent more time on it. Mm. But in the last three weeks, I've been talking to a lot of people and trying to get a better handle on it so I can report on it better uh, as a uh, boxing commentator. Mm -hmm. And I am now of the opinion that the only testing that will 
prevent this is Olympic style testing. Really? Yes, I'm, I believe that. Because I've talked to three or four people who are experts in the area and they all tell me that because of the shelf life of, of um, the different masking agents mm. and the, the drugs that we are taken, uh, you can manipulate through certain drug tests. Really? Some people are very high on uh, the VADA testing system. I mean, did you have, have you heard about that? Well, I think that, that the, that's good. Um, I just think it has to be Olympic style. Really? They take the blood randomly and um, uh, because otherwise I just don't know if it's going to work. All right, Al. Thanks a lot for your thoughts. Greatly appreciate it.